Hey everybody, this is Rick Morgan. I want to talk to you a little bit about removing ink from comic book covers. Now, it's a problem because we all know we want to remove the ink that's been deposited on a book without removing anything that we don't want removed, right? And they're all ink, so it makes it a challenge. So I want to talk about the most common case, which is a, a standard Sharpie pen, you know, one of the, the standard Sharpies, and it's on a silver or bronze age book. And what do we do? What are the steps we go through to remove this ink? Well, largely we want to find a solvent to remove it. And a lot of times it's isopropanol. It's not always isopropanol, but very often it is. You'll have the best luck when it's not on a red, yellow, or a white section of a book. It can be really hard to remove there. Be it a really dark color, like a really dark green, a really dark blue can be a little easier. And what you do is you really just want to apply some solvent and remove some ink and you will probably never get all of it off, but you can reduce what it looks like. Sometimes it actually does come quite a bit off and there are variations in the ink on the books and in the Sharpie inks and the aging that make it easier or more difficult. But I want to talk today about this copy of uh, Iron Fist 14, the first appearance of Sabretooth and I had a uh, friend who wanted just the Bob Sharon signature removed from this book and not the others. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it completely, and I, I was right. Uh, but these are some explorations and things to look out for when you want to do the same thing. And so I'll I'll start here and show you this before picture, and then we'll get started and show you what things we want to consider when we're when we're doing something like this. The most important thing I'll talk about next is, is selecting a solvent. I'm, I'm going to select uh, isopropanol here for a Sharpie pen. is often more than 90% isopropanol, I like 96 or 97% really. It's a very polar solvent. It works pretty well on uh, Sharpie pens without removing much of the other ink underneath it. Uh, the other end, if I want to go non-polar, I'd use hexane or naphtha. And those are things you can find. I'm pretty sure you can get it at Amazon. I get them at a local hardware store called Stone Stoneway here in, in the Seattle area. Uh, toluene's another favorite of mine. I really like toluene. It's it removes a lot of things without uh, removing the other ink. And Legroin or Petithor, L-I-G-R-O-I-N. Petithor you can get at Amazon, little bottles. And you're just using drops of the stuff on those like, pointy, um, I'll show you here, I have these long skinny sort of pointy um, Q-tips like this. You can use them, you have to roll, don't rub, but you might have to rub after a while if you want to get a little vigorous with it. But, you know, applying those and rubbing them off is, a lot of the work, but first you want to do a test spot. And if you look here, you'll see this area here with the tip of an N on this Bob Sharon, and I tried all different solvents, increasingly polar, and you can see where I finally got some off, and it starts to smear, of course. Uh, you get a little wider area, and uh, you can see where I'm removing some. And that's the key is when I notice that it smeared quite a bit, uh, and it always does, Sharpie pens always do. Smear meaning that if you get it damp with the solvent, it makes the signature bigger. And the biggest key I'm going to show you today is how to avoid that, or at least how I avoid it. And we'll, and then we, after we've selected a solvent, what we're going to do is we are going to make a mask for the signature, and I'll show you how I how I would do that. Next, I traced and drew the around the signature. I scanned the book, and then I trace in Adobe Illustrator the actual signature and then to save you a little bit of time watching me do that I just show you this is what it's really what it looked like and then I laser cut it out and made a mask of both the interior and the exterior portion using a really thick SPS card stack and I sandpapered the back of it to make it really rough and absorbent so it would absorb a lot of the solvent and the ink off of the book and here's what that looks like so we'll see here, I have a, a watch glass. It's just a, you know, bent piece of glass you can get for probably three bucks at any scientific supply store at Amazon. Here's the signature. I'm going to cover the areas I don't want affected. Here's the isopropanol. Here are some Q-tips. There's my one my mask. That's the second part. I'm gonna use this mask next. You can see how well, it, we're testing to see how well it lines up with the signature. It looks pretty good, right? Not everything's masked, but it keeps us from getting out of lines too much. These are the little cutout pieces that I'm going to use to stop the spread. 
meaning that I'll put solvent on these pieces and absorb ink into these. Now they're the same shape because they prevent the ink from getting any wider. It can't go wider than these pieces are and that's the trick. You'll see that here. I'm going to cover the areas I don't want anything to accidentally get dropped on with a little bit of a Kim wipe there, something absorbent. And then I'm going to take this little cutout piece of this letter, the bob, soak it in isopropanol. Then I dab it off in some paper above that area. And then I'll put it on the signature. Now, the great thing here is this, like I would keep saying, it keeps it from spreading. It keeps the ink from going wider when you get solvent on it. It's a great little trick here. Now let it sit for a little while. And then I pull it off. And you can see it's a little bit of widening, but that's mostly just solvent and not much ink. And then up comes the ink. You'll see I'm kicking a lot of it up here into this Kim wipe. And I'll do the same thing with the Sharon part. And I'll dip that, I'm just gonna dab it off. I'll put this on here, I'll line it up just right. Because this Sharpie, it really spreads quickly in isopropanol. If you were just to drop some on there, it would come up right away. It would, it would spread right away. It makes, the, makes it worse a lot of times. And you can see how I'm now picking it up with this Kim wipe, and that's a lot of it. A lot of it's just this back and forth pattern of removing this. And by the way, I have I do have a backing board on the other side of this cover so it doesn't spread to the rest of the book. I should have mentioned that earlier. And I'm just going to kind of go back and forth, and I just dab it here. And I'm stopping it from spreading. Now I can really go, go to work on the book because I've got the sort of what I call the loose stuff removed. So I'm not so worried about it spreading wider. And there, see it's coming up. And I'm not going to be able to get all of this, but you can see how it is coming up and it does look better. It's not great, but it's better. Now we can switch to the other part of the mask, once it's dabbed up a little, and we can go to work with the with the Q-tips. We'll take this part and it keeps us from rubbing outside of the lines, which we don't want to do typically. Now this boring gets pretty video gets pretty boring after this because it's a lot of taking some solvent, dabbing a little teeny bit on the Q-tip, holding the mask in place, and just slightly, lightly rubbing back and forth picking up teeny amounts and watching constantly to see when I pick up ink. I don't want to pick up the blue or the yellow. I really want to watch this and make sure I'm only picking up the black and I'm very, very little pressure down. And it's just doing this over and over again, moving from letter to letter and only picking up a teeny amount each time and then I'll switch and go through a different q-tip and I might have to do this I don't know 20 30 times because if I put more pressure on it it would actually pick up more of the black ink but it will also pick up some of the underlying ink. I'm being very very cautious not to do that and in fact I want to stop as soon as I start picking up any of the blue ink, blue ink at all So I'll show you here, here's the initial as a reminder what it originally looked like when, um, when I started. And again, the key thing I wanted to do here was remove some of the ink. I had no hope of ultimate success without it spreading, looking worse. And I'll show you how, how I did that. And what it looked like. And not great. It isn't really. And the, the person, the owner of the, this book decided he wanted he wanted more ink removed and wanted to try himself. And he's he's learning fast, he's doing a good job. So but then he wanted to remove more. And you can see what can happen if, if you want to remove more, there's a trade-off, right? He did definitely get more of it off, but there's, you can see there's definitely also, uh, the, blue, the blue ink is, is removed too in there too. So you kind of have to, I just wanted to show like, you know, beginning and if you stop in the middle and you keep going, like what can happen? And you just have to pick your own comfort zone. There's no, 
I guess there's really no right or wrong answer unless you just don't touch it at all if you really want that off. In this case, he wanted someone else to sign over it, so there was going to be other ink on it. So that would be okay in this particular case. And besides, it's his book. He can do whatever the hell he wants, right? Just that my comfort zone in someone else's book wouldn't be to remove you know, the irreplaceable. I couldn't put that ink back on there. So uh, that's where I stop. He continued in you. And it's a, just a nice progression to let you see like where, where it's going to go with that. It's rare to get all of the Sharpie. If you can, on some cases, it's kind of ridiculously easy to come off. Like the same person had another book, uh, really dark green color of an X-Men book, and he got the Sharpie like right off. Yeah, but the next light green over it did devastated that other part of it. And so um, it, it sometimes does come off. And these light blues and these light yellows, it's a very delicate operation and, and can be a challenge. So anyway, that's just some insight into what I find that happens for me. And uh, I hope I hope you like it too. If you need some help laser cutting some of those signatures, I mean, you can send me an image. I'll cut one out for you, or you know, any spot of ink or any dirt thing. I'll send it back to you, and you can you can try that out. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care. Bye bye.